Chapter 34 Do you know anything about indulgence? Chippewa asked as he saw that Dan was about to turn to the next page of his book. Ah, Gustavo laughed. Dan probably doesn't, but I do, he said, slapping Dan's back. They were still sitting in the lounge room. See, Chippewa, I've indulged in everything that could make me feel good or help me forget where I had been and what I had seen. But Dan here, he doesn't know what temptation really means. He's had it hard when he had to fend for himself, but I don't know that he ever broke down and succumbed to any temptation or indulged into anything that would have hurt him. Is that right, Dan? Chippewa asked. Dan smiled and switched his gaze from Gustavo to Chippewa. I wouldn't say that. I was always thinking of ways to get back to the life I had known. I worked hard for everything I got, but I was tempted many times to chuck all that for spending money on things that I didn't really need. And did you succumb to these temptations? No, I didn't, Dan replied. You see, Chippewa, I've always had a little voice inside me telling me if I was doing the right thing. I'd say I would indulge in partying with Fabio when we were in college. Yes, but apart from that, I had fun restoring cars, one at a time, because I couldn't afford to buy all the cars I saw, and they paid for themselves and for part of my college tuition. Chippewa nodded. Well then, I think you'll find that the next page of your book contains both paragraphs, one dealing with indulgence and the other with temptation. I don't think you need any more than you know already to fight temptation or succumb indulgence but I'll be interested to see what it says, Gustavo piped up. And with these words, Dan turned to the next page of his book. Thus far, you have been given tolerance, acceptance, patience, determination. In your future, there will be time for you to face temptation and the indulgence necessary to avoid your falling at the grips of evil. Indulgence will steer you away from the wrong temptation. However, indulging in the desirable or appealing things in life could be detrimental to your well-being and could be very costly indeed. If tolerance, acceptance, patience, determination, compassion, indulgence and resisting temptation will help you in forging your way into the future, perhaps endurance will crown your efforts with equal rewards. But remember, enduring the worst of life's torments require perseverance and untamable will. Your dream will be etched in your mind and none will be erased once you have attained your goal. That's interesting, Dan said, raising his gaze to Chippewa. It says that my dream will be etched in my mind and none will be erased when I have attained my goal. Does that mean I could start another goal, or working on another dream with these same tools? Let me ask you this, Dan, Chippewa said. Does life end with the acknowledgement of one's dream? No, of course not, but this is to build my future, and once I've reached my goal, I could work on something entirely different, right? Yes, you could, Chippewa replied, nodding. However, think of your future as the foundation of your house. It wouldn't be a good idea to demolish the foundation if you wanted to build another house, would it? What if I got bored with what I've chosen to do? I hate things that are only a repeat of the previous day's venture. What then? Let's examine your question one step at a time, OK? Dan nodded to Chippewa's suggestion. Although attaining one's goal is laudable, the journey to your destination should provide you with experiences that will enable you to go further than your first target. He paused. Perhaps an example will help. If you decided to drive to Miami with your Porsche, yet you knew that it would need some adjustment to the engine before you could start on your journey... The goal is to drive to Miami, but making the adjustments is a hurdle that you have to cross before making a start, right? Sure, Dan replied. And once I would have bought the new carburetor, I could be on my way, couldn't I? Yes, Dan, you could, and indeed you would be on your way, as you planned. Yet when you arrive in Miami, you remember how enjoyable the trip was. So you decide to go somewhere else, perhaps exploring places in Florida you've never visited. But what about time? Gustavo interjected. Would Dan have time to go to any place once he arrived in Miami? For the sake of this example, let's say that Dan is on holidays and has time to venture a little farther out, shall we? OK, Gustavo said. He turned to look at Dan. Where would you go then? Well, if the car was in perfect working order by then, I'd probably drive along the coast to Virginia. Very well, Chippewa said, grinning. The reason for which you chose to go to Virginia at this point is not important. What's important for you to remember, however, is that your Porsche has to be in perfect working order for you to venture farther and it will be the same once you are on the road to forge your future. You have to ensure that each building block is fully secured before putting more layers on top of those you've just constructed. Yes, I understand all that, Chippewa, Dan said, showing his impatience. What I wanted to know is if I could do something else with my life once I've done what I wanted in the first place. Ah, yes, if you don't like the house you've just built, you can always redecorate or remodel it as you wish. What if I wanted to build an entirely different house somewhere else? Could I do that? Within the confines of the future, you will have chosen the trace for yourself up to 2013. After that, you will be free to do whatever else you wish to do. You mean my first destination will remain the same? Yes, Dan. You are destined to return to your house with your family. 
but what you do with your life in the meantime should be different. Remember, God has given you the opportunity to alter your future, but wherever you land will remain the same. You won't be able to have another wife or other children, Gustavus suggested. Is that what you mean? He looked at Chippewa. Not that I would ever want to, Dan said, chuckling. The woman I saw at the racetrack and those kids, they are all beautiful. Who in their right mind would want another family when I've got one like that? Chippewa and Gustavo had to laugh at Dan's enthusiasm. That afternoon aboard the cruiser, after catching another three fish, the family were sitting down having a delicious dinner which Malou had cooked, with Damienos providing all of the ingredients she needed with a snap of his fingers. Gabby, however, was not enjoying her meal. I can't get it out of my mind, she blurted, putting a fork down. What's that? Malou asked her. You killing that fish, that's what, Mum. Well, if you don't want to eat your meal, that's fine, Malou said. You can leave the fish aside and I'm sure Damienos will delight in eating it tonight. She turned her gaze to their cat. Wouldn't you? Absolutely, he replied, grinning. As long as I know it was caught not for the sport of it, but to fill one's tummy, and yes, I will enjoy it. Why can't we just eat vegetables and cereal? Gabby continued arguing. We wouldn't have to kill anything, then. Because God has created omnivorous human beings, Gabby, Damon S. explained. He has made you so that you could eat everything, including meat, poultry, and fish, along with vegetables and cereals. You, as every human being on earth, have been created equal, and that means that all humans are designed the same way. But there are many vegetarian people who are very healthy. Yes, Gabby, there are, yet to maintain their health, they have to replace all of the ingredients they miss by not eating meat or fish with something else, otherwise they would die. Damien S is right, Gabby, Malou went on. There's nothing wrong with eat with people eating only vegetables, but God did not design you that way. Besides, Stefano piped up, after swallowing a mouth of four, there is the natural restoration of flora and fauna that occurs every day. What does that mean? Gabby asked, returning to eating a bite of her fish. It means that if all animals never killed anything to feed themselves, they would all die. The earth needs to be regenerated, Gabby. That's God's plan. Okay, okay, Gabby said, but killing that fish still grossed me out. After silence had broken among the three men, Chippewa said, Why don't we analyse another of the statements made in those paragraphs? Which one? Dan asked, returning his gaze to the book opened in his lap. The last sentence dealt with endurance, and I believe you will need quite a bit of it to attain your goal, Dan. But aren't there more than one form of endurance? Gustavo asked Chippewa. The latter nodded. Yes, absolutely, but you're running a marathon. You need physical endurance to reach the finish line. The average human body is not built the same as the one of a gazelle. Humans need far more endurance to run the same distance as a gazelle would have effortlessly. On the other hand, endurance is also present when faced with personal problems or hurdles that life puts in front of you from time to time. And I will be facing problems and having to surmount obstacles, I suppose, Dan said. Yes, Chippewa nodded, but I believe you will have to develop both types of endurance in your case. But I'm not intending to run a marathon any time soon, Dan argued, a broad smile crossing his lips. Perhaps Gustavo could expand on that subject, Chippewa said, looking at the man. Well, if you mean I'd need endurance to drive one of those semis for eight long hours on an endless highway in the middle of the night, I'd say you're right, Chippewa. It demands constant concentration, staying focused, and above all resist the temptation of falling asleep. Very good, Chippewa said, bobbing his head up and down. And the same will be true when you'll be at the control of an aircraft flying 30,000 feet above ground with 200 or 300 passengers on board, Dan. You will need to develop the endurance required to accomplish such a task. Yes, but doesn't the captain have a co-pilot or even getting the plane on autopilot when he's tired? In the year you're presently living, Dan, the technology exists, but it's not as secure or practical as it would be in years to come. However, depending on technology to save the day is not always the best course of action. If you were ever called to pilot a long-distance carrier, you will have developed the endurance required to stay alert for 10 to 12 hours on end. That's like driving a car in the Paris Daco race, Dan said. Every day these guys have to cross as many miles as they could under horrible conditions. Perfect example, Dan, Chippewa interposed, chuckling. These drivers have endurance to pilot their vehicles for long hours and endurance to go through any obstacles in their path. 